Look at myself in the mirror like, oh girl, you cute. Yeah, girl, I warned you. You gon' be so mad when I see you and keep walking by. Oh no. So he almost got scammed for three thousand oh, dollars, and shoot. a beautiful song came out of it. Okay, um, well, what happened? So Today on the podcast, we have a number one award winning. I love, I love starting out like that. It just sounds good, but uh, there is some truth to that. You uh, you were first place or you were or a finalist, a finalist. Finalist, finalist for the Whammies, which is a Washington Grammys. Yes, pretty much. Pretty Interesting. much for DC okay. music. What yeah. went into actually becoming a finalist? Pretty much so um, when the... You're gonna edit stuff out, right? Nope. This no. is <laughs> no. no. I like the organicness. No, no. it's okay. Like, All just right. talk about the process of how it went. Yeah, I know this so, is your, one of your first interviews, so. Yeah. So, um, pretty much the Whammies is like the highest. I would say like highest DC music honors. And so, um, if you're like an artist in every category, you can nominate um, whoever you think deserves that award. And pretty much, you have to come and get your public votes. Um, so I got like a lot of my job to vote, you know, family and friends. And then pretty much they pick the finalists just based off who has the most public vote. Mm -hmm. And then um, so now I'm in the finalist category, the award ceremonies in April. So okay. we'll go get to figure out and have our little Grammy experience for Ooh. the DMV. So I'm up for both of those categories. Yeah, Super you, excited. the best song and then best R&B. Best song, best R&B artist. Artist. That's exciting. So. Yeah. So you you did like a, a campaign for it. You were just telling everyone to vote. Well, or... I'm a good thing. I'm skilled in like making flyers and stuff. Um, I make like bomb flyers, and so I was always making little flyers, little video shorts and stuff, just to promote like you know vote for me for the whammies. And then I just couldn't believe it when I found out the news because there was about like 80 people in my category. So wow. just to be like the top seven in that. Just it's just like a lot of validation that I needed personally. Yeah. So. Well, I guess it means that you're a half decent artist. Half That's decent what I'm vocalist. saying. Yeah. That's how actually I found you. I found you from uh, uh, one of John Clark's uh, videos. Yes. I saw you singing on it. Oh, really? And I was like, wow, like she is so good. Oh, wow. Thank so you. Yeah, that was a, a showcase or what was that like a performance? Um, with John Clark, I've bumped in him so many times. We've known each other for a couple years now. Um and we just we just see each other like here and there just at different, you know, mutual friends, music friends. But I've been supporting him for a while. So mm. um, definitely when I clicked on the podcast page and stuff, I was like, oh, he did John Clark. I was like, OK, that's yeah. happened. Did you come to that last show that he was? At uh, Songbird? I wish I did. I, no. I saw him on there, too. That's actually where I found him. That's okay. his last show. So it's like oh, wow, hey, these okay. shows, they, they start creating some buzz behind your name. Yes. And you really can get on the map. You don't know who's watching. Mm -mm. That's the beauty of it. Exactly. That's like, so it's like when we're starting out, we kind of think things are like stacked against us. Is like, how are we going to get noticed and everything? Like that. All it takes is just one opportunity of someone who believes in you. Exactly. And then now you're a little bit more on the map and you just start using the that resources. To get to the, yeah, to the next level. And yes, because it took me a while to like just figure out like the resources that I had around me that I could use. Because it's like now, just like breaking myself into this industry like I have people who drum people who play piano like mm. live bands I have people who plan events like you know um open mics and all that stuff I'm getting close to like the people who throw the open mics mm. so it's just like it's it's a fun experience seeing everything kind of like work itself out mm -hmm. and yeah. I think that's because uh when you find someone you also like their um like what they're um, like a platform that they're making or like they're putting artists on or like everyone is supporting one another yeah and so it's it's like you can't really do it alone and, and the fact that someone else is going you know like trying to organize something you're willing to like shout them out and and put them on your story and all this it's like exactly you really can't do it alone and you have to like re it's a t it takes a team and it also it just like a community of people to bring t to lift each other up it is and for the longest i'm not gonna lie like i thought that like getting fame and just like being this R&B singer. I always tell people that I used to tell my mom, 
mom, how do you like sign up to be a singer? That's when I was like a little kid. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how, I want to be a singer, so how do I like <laughs> sign up to do it? And she's like, Amber, it doesn't work like that. So just seeing like, even just dropping my first song, like I thought that it was just going to go viral. Like I'm going to have like this big mansion. Mm -hmm. Now I'm famous. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow, it doesn't work like that. Like my song, it's still growing. It's doing like good, but it's just like, wow, you really do have to just like, build that team around you and then it comes over the years and then that's why you like look at the scissors and all of them like that getting their first grammys victoria monet like in their 30s so it's really just it's a learning it's a mm. it's just a learning process it's a long haul that. too and you don't it's not gonna come overnight it's just like it i think though the ones that actually do make it to well, i guess some accolade of the grammys you know which is it's a great honor to, to actually be you know have that but also just being a successful artist, which I guess to me just means doing what you love full time. Exactly. Um, but it takes a level of investment that you have to really sacrifice so much to get there for you to realize that like it's just a lifestyle. And then once you're there, it's not like anything that it's not like your mentality has changed. Mm -hmm. It's like, OK, I still want to grow. I want to uh, work with this person now. I want to develop more as an artist. So it's it's just always just another step to it yeah and you never there's not a destination in a sense you know like exactly it's just like you said full-time if i could just live off of singing like i would have a happy life mm -hmm. like i wouldn't have to wake up every morning like i don't want to go to work like i'm gonna love what i'm doing so have you tried a backwards uh engineer reverse engineer how to get there what's that so like for instance if you have a dream to make it to a big stadium or something like that mm -hmm. think about okay so who do i need to know in order to get to that stadium or like how do i develop these relationships who do i need to reach out to or to if is my music good enough like what kind of music are they looking for yeah now it's just like slowly bringing it back to okay what do i need to work on right now to get to a little bit closer to that dream of yeah. being like in the stadium um so like what i'm doing now yeah what are you kinda... doing to like develop Oh, I mean, there's a list of things like, I mean, it really took me until I want to say, was it two years ago that I started live performing? Um, I was I had a couple original songs, but I just wasn't like sure about them, especially like to perform in front of a crowd. And then I have to shout out my man's Mark Bravo. He has this organization called Creative House, and he had hit me up one December two years ago and was like, hey, like, you know, I was looking at your page. Do you want to come, you know, sing for this little thing that we have? And I ended up picking a couple original songs, performing them for the first time, and I just fell in love with just, like, I was like, okay, first of all, people like it. I was like, I sound good. I mean, I know I can sing. And then I was just like, this is my original work. So it's always a special feeling, like, singing your original music and not having to do covers anymore. And then people actually like, like, what they're hearing. Mm -hmm. So... Shout out to him for putting me on my first show. Ever since then, I've just been skyrocket skyrocketing in my like own career. So nice. open mics, people see me everywhere just because this is what I love to do. So mm. I'm gonna be everywhere. Like if it's open mic, any anything that has to do with singing, mm. I'm there. And I think that's definitely part of the reason why I had, you know, a lot of support behind me, just like with the whammies and everything, just because people have been constantly seeing my face. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, I'm doing a lot. So just hitting every open mic. I'm part of a lot of collectives and everything. What collectives um, are you part of? Yes, District Collective first. That's actually the name. Mm -hmm. um, shout out Michael Bowie and the whole team over there. I started going there. I want to say, I think everything started unraveling two years ago. Okay. That's um, an open mic and a collective that we have. Uh, we get together every first Tuesday of the month at Eaton Hotel. Um, and what's different about us is... Usually, like, jam sessions, you can do covers, you can do anything you want, but we're, like, honing in on just creating something on the spot. So mm. they want you to get up there and just... Freestyle. Freestyle. So really? when I tell you, I have to thank them for just opening up my... And still to this day, opening up my creative, like, sense and just making up words on the spot, verses, songs. Really? So you, you're good at freestyle? At this point, like, I think I'm, like, I'm, I'm half decent. Okay. I'm half decent. See, I usually uh, make my artists kind of freestyle at the end, you know, oh, to give people, you know, something to look forward to. Yeah. Maybe, you know, actually we'll do, like, a little cliffhanger thing where, you know, yes. just to kind of give I'm people down. a little heads up. Mm -hmm. We'll do a little freestyle uh, closer to the end. That'll, be, that'll work. That'll work. That'll, be that'll They'll be proud of me. Nice. Hopefully. So how long how long have you been in music? How how has uh, singing been involved like yes. through your development? So I like to say I got started in the womb, but 
Mm -hmm. you know, people will disagree. <laughs> but um, usually just just in the church for me, um, like started at five years old, sang my first solo in church. Um, progressed, started singing national anthems, middle school, high school, people around the community just asking me. There was a competition in my hometown, Hagerstown, Maryland, mm -hmm. um, that it was called Teen Idol. I competed for that three years in a row, didn't ever make it to the finals. So mm -hmm. it was kind of just like a... I was like, am I going? Like, is this something I should do? Mm. So then I went off to college. I went to Howard University for a little bit, joined the gospel choir. Oh, had yes. endless opportunities with that, sang back up for Fantasia. Wow. Um, it was just, it was it was a good time. They really, like, gospel choir really strengthened my voice. So just mm. taking it to where I didn't think it could go. Mm, okay. um, and then after that, uh, I couldn't finish school. Um, I had a couple of financial aid, like, mishaps. Mis yeah, mishaps. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of just started working out in Silver Spring mm -hmm. and just started singing. And I was like, maybe I could take this thing, you know, mm -hmm. to the next level. Pro. Exactly. That's sick. So how old are you? 24. 24? That's 24. I'm so scared to be 25. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What's going to happen at 25? I, I don't know. It's like it's like I know I've been adulting, but like adulting's about to hit like mm. hard. Now it's like, all right, Amber, you gotta you gotta have some sort of backup plan. Like I'm like halfway in between chasing a dream and then, you know, like trying to be logical about everything. That's the tough part. I think especially as a creative, we don't like to be too logical. We're dreamers. We think big picture and what 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 can we do to get there? Uh and so the small details of of like the day to day, sometimes get in our way. Uh, yeah. But there's no there's no uh, knocking full time jobs and and working on, you know, baby stepping it. I personally am. I try to go gun ho. I have this like very like all or nothing approach, where yeah. I I look at everything like cost and opportunity opportunity and cost. So like, what's the opportunity of me going all in on something, and it. If all worse comes to worse, like there's going to be a way, there's going to be some sort of way for me to fall back. Like I could fall, exactly. I could get a job. <laughs> like that's I what could... I'm saying. And like I don't get too upset about like the whole school thing because I'm like I can go back to school anytime. In the field that I was in, I majored in broadcast journalism, so you know, and I was like so good at it while I was in school. So it's just like I know I have like other things that I can get back into. Um, journalism is a field that you can be in for a long time. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I could really, you know, fall back on another passion of mine. Really? But I was like, I'll never be this young again. So I was just like, you know, my mom, she's always like, you know, you got to think about like get, getting back in there. But I'm just like, you know, I'm going to just take this time and just, you know, chase a dream before mm -hmm. like I get too old. Yeah. I mean, I actually don't think there's a time limit on chasing a dream. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of, um, I think there is a little bit of a stigma of like if you're past like 40, yeah. like certain artists, like we, we think of them having to be more established. Mm -hmm. Like now, you know, um, all the artists, I mean, at least the artists I looked up to, you know, like Nicki Minaj, she yeah. was, uh, she's like 40 or something That's what like I'm that. saying. Drake is 40 or, mm -hmm. you know, Jay-Z is 50. I don't even know. Like there's some really old, like they're getting, they're getting there. They're up Two there. Chains actually made it, I think, when he was like 40 something. That's what I'm saying. It's it's like there's no you just you just never know when. So it's just like I don't think there's not there's not a wrong time to like start. Mm -hmm. I I think that every performance that you have, any opportunity you have is just like you uh, fulfilling your dream. Like you're you're like okay, your dream is a to is to perform. Yes. Okay, so why does it have to be in front of ten thousand people? It can be just in front of ten people, and the exactly. fact that you're doing it, like you mm -hmm. put, you can put that level of attention to detail in every performance. You make that your best performance. Yeah, that's what's gonna get you to that even that next level. That exactly maybe now fifteen, twenty people. And you're I'm inspiring learning. people. I'm learning like every day, and like that's why I don't like. I used to deny like opportunities. Like no, I'm too scared. I'm gonna forget the lyrics. You know, I don't believe in myself. But now I'm just like, that's the only way I'm going to learn, you know, what I don't like, what I do like. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I accept every opportunity that comes my way and then just learn from it. If it's not, you know, even with this podcast interview, like I told my boyfriend, I was like, I'm used to being behind the camera because, you know, like I was uh, what doing interviews and stuff. But, you know, being just in front of the camera, doing like a podcast, that's new for me. But I was like, I can't deny it because this is a part of this is going to prepare me for, you know, mm -hmm. bigger 
bigger platforms. So. Excuse me. <laughs> no, no. I, I get what you're saying, but I resent that. I mean, if they ask me to come on the Breakfast Club, like I'm be like, you know what? Shout out my man. He got me. He got me started in the podcast. The producer pod. Yes, the producer That'd be pod. Sick. Yeah, actually, to, to shift subjects a little bit, um, I think that is a cool, I like. Uh, thing that we can talk about uh, discuss is like the 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 facade artists make in order to to try to seem like they're got it all figured out when in reality i think when people see vulnerability of like who what's the struggle that you're going through yeah they relate to it and then they they it's like they see part of themselves in you Exactly. And that's what it's about. It's not always just creating an objectified version mm-hmm. of uh, an idol of uh, who they want to look up to because at the end of the day, the human aspect is what we connect to. Exactly. So that's good. And I also I also use that like concept, Justin, like with the whole recording songs. My man, shout out Ben. Um, he re- helped me record my first song in my living room. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I mean, also just like working a nine to five, like I'm not always going to have money for studio time. So that was like a big pill I had to swallow just breaking into the little industry because I was just like, everybody has to go into the studio every week. Like people are dropping songs here mm-hmm. this fast, this fast. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, um, but you know, I had to be realistic with myself. Like I, I don't make like a thousand dollars, you know, a week or mm-hmm. like, um, a couple, I don't make a thousand dollars like a day to be just paying for studio time. Like people be going every night and I'm just like, I need to just find, you know, you work yeah. at your own pace. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, you gotta find your own pace. Yeah. I think that's important. Cause, um, like it gets so easy to get caught into the competitive nature of what the, how how much is someone else working? Are they outworking me? Yeah. And I think that where you really have to keep your um, focus is and what you have control over. Yeah. And how like effective uh, can you be with your time? Mm-hmm. And I think part of that is just like understanding yourself and your thought process instead of having to like be scatterbrained and, and think oh i need to do this but i'm need to do this first and exactly because so, um it's actually it's so funny that so do you have adhd um i mean i feel like i have some traits maybe but maybe not maybe not because i don't even i need to figure out my definition first, the fact so. that you like the way you answered that was a very adhd I answer i will say like i like with anxiety like there's a lot of words that like i just did though like you know you know you hear about depression you hear about anxiety and all that mm-hmm. stuff but it's like until you actually research it you're like oh wait like i really do have some of these mm-hmm. symptoms so um just like anxiety i never like you know, declared myself that ever until just like recently, I'm just like, I'm all always just constantly worried, feared about mm. just, you know, like the dumbest things too. It just, when it comes to performing, like, Oh my gosh, I can't sing. And it's just like the, really? you still have doubts about that. Oh, a hundred percent. Like, and I don't know when it's going to like fade away. And that's why I feel like I keep going out and singing. Cause I'm just like, it's going to have to leave one of these days. Like mm. the nerves are going to have to like go away soon or just like, just believe it in myself. Just like the talent knowing that I can sing, I can songwrite. Mm -hmm. Um, But just all that just daily, like my boyfriend can tell you, I'm just, before every performance, I'm just like, oh, they're going to hate me. Like (laughs) I can't sing. Like, you know, my my voice, you know, it's just constant. Anxiety and uh, the anxiousness, the nerves, all mean that you're doing something you care about. I know, and they tell me that. So I'm just like, all right, well, at least this, these are good feelings then. like. Yeah, like channel that and turn it into excitement. Yes. Because I also have social anxiety and like uh, wondering if I'm enough and all this like know it, like figuring out if I have like enough value to offer in certain situations. Mm-hmm. But like the more and more you do it, the more you realize that like everyone is figuring it out as well. They and that are. no one really has a set like – Nothing really goes according to plan. They try to make it work, but it's just how you adjust and adapt to those situations that makes you actually a valuable member of the team. Exactly. So it's just putting pressure on yourself. That's what it is mostly. For no reason. And it's like no matter how many times they tell you you're good or you're getting validated in all these huge spaces. I did a contest probably about like a year and a half ago. It was called like the Rep It Social Contest. They brought it to the Fillmore. The prize was $10,000. Oh, the judges, it was like execs, all these like celebrity judges and stuff. Um, 
And even then, like, there was probably about, like, 50 people who auditioned. I made the top 10, and I was, like, calling wow. my mom. was, like, crying, like, oh, my God, I made top 10. Um, and then, what happened? Lost my point. Were you were top five? Or did you, like, no, how'd you yeah. Make it? So, yeah, they called me. I'm sitting upstairs waiting for the results for the top 10, and they're, like, Amber, you made the top 10. Come down to your interview. And it's just, like, even in that space, I'm still, like, oh, I'm going to mess up tonight for the big, like, finale performance. Oh. But it's just, like, I don't know why I can't give myself props, like, in those moments where it's, like, all these other people are going home upset. And I got, like, the, you know, 10th spot or whatever. Yeah. So it's just, like, I don't know what it's going to take for me to actually, like, you know. And once I do figure that out, whatever it is, like, I know it's going to mm. be skyrocketing from there. It's internal belief. It's self-confidence. Um I think if you really capture that, like, what you have is special and you, you've, like... Yeah. The effort that you've put into it is obviously evident towards, like, how people are responding to you. Like, yeah. that's another thing is, like, this is, like, another thing that I internally have to put... Like, I go through constantly is figuring out, okay, I, I'm accomplished in this, this. I know I'm really good. People paid for, for this and this. But this month... Can I figure, can I pull it off? Exactly. And then it's like, okay, I need to, I, I always need to step up, step mm -hmm. up to the plate. What else can I do to improve? And, and even those times when you, let's say, may only make it to top 10, it's like, okay, like, hey, we've been here before. We've been to top 10. Exactly. So now I know how to, I know what the judges are looking for from top 10. Exactly. So now I, let me try to get top five, top, you know, two. And then now I'm, you know, up, up there. there. And, you, you done know, one. Yeah. yeah, and that's kind of my mindset now going into like just like the whammies because I feel like in my singing career, this is probably the biggest thing that's happened. And even it may be minor just considering like all the award shows, but like this is a start like that, yeah. you know, shows me that I'm going in the right direction. People like it, you know, I, I'm content with it. So, you know, I'm I'm starting to like, I guess, slowly believe it now. It's like seeping in, not fully, but you'll, mm. everybody's going to know when it's full because then I'll probably already be famous. Yeah. <laughs> so is your dream to be famous? Yeah. So I it's actually changed. Like when I was a kid, probably like famous, like I want everybody to know my name, da da da. Mm. But now it's probably just like I want everyone to know my music. Like mm. I, my face don't even have to be attached at this point. And sometimes I often thought about just songwriting, getting into that and like writing for others. Um, but I mean I just love physically singing so much that um, I really, I, I do want, I do want to just, I just want to be comfortable in life, mm. you know, doing what I love, waking up, teaching others if it gets to that point. Um, but just, just, yeah, I could sing. Living I was, it. Yeah, just living in it. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, I think that is also the dream. I think just expressing yourself and being seen is yeah. nice too. Mm -hmm. And I think that definitely comes from deep-seated, deep um, like, desire for validation mm -hmm. i think that we have like even as like a kid yeah we we have that like not not being seen or heard mm -hmm. and yeah and, that, and then it turns us into these aspiring you know artists that are are like p paving our way for other people but you know generations but um um early um before us after us yeah Genera yeah generations yeah. after us yeah <laughs> to uh -huh. um to be inspired by us yeah. so that they can uh you can hand the baton when when you're ready exactly but if i can teach anyone in any way whatever i learn in this life that'll come to me definitely willing to pass that down not gatekeep mm -hmm. um and i'm already doing that i could see and it's just funny how things like happen so fast because just a year ago like just being with like the collective district collective at Eaton, um, I just sang there a couple of times and then I, you know, got close with Michael um, that organized it. And now, you know, just with the opportunities, just a couple months ago, we had um, a super jam. So we got mm. a whole bunch of new artists. They auditioned at the Eaton where we do our shows. And we had a super jam at the, what's, what's it called? The Atlas Theater mm. by Pie Shop downtown DC. Um, 
and he had asked me to be a judge for it. So it was just wow. like, wow, like even just like in less than a year, like now I'm getting to, you know, critique like what I see. And it helped me out because I'm just like, I, I see myself in all these performers and like where I was. And like even sometimes some of the performers are like that I'm on the lineup with. They'll come up to me and they'll be like, Amber, like you just your stage presence is good. You sing loud. Da, da, da. And I'm just like, that's crazy that you're saying this to me because <laughs> I, I just don't see it. I'm just I'm just not seeing what everyone's seeing. But, you know, if you hear it, you know, as many times as I do, then it's just like it's just you can't help but to believe it. Yeah. So I can tell you're a super genuine person. Yes. Who who just like I could tell that. Well, you've only done it for what two years now, or a year? Um, so yeah, singing forever, but just started taking my actual career serious probably two years ago. Okay, so that's not that long. This is not, you know, like that. That's so the fact that it's so early, but you're you're also humble and and like you're willing to learn and and you're nervous and there's like that finding yourself point too. Yeah, I I remember. Um, I mean, I've been in the industry for 12 years, so I've had had a lot of like processes of thinking that 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 song I'm gonna release is gonna be the biggest song ever, and I'm gonna make it and all that. Like, I had that dream too, but I think the more, I I think for me it's more about fulfilling other people's dreams now. Yeah. Of like trying to understand where I can help out mm -hmm. in in fulfilling, and that for me it's production, music production, songwriting. Um, nice. But knowing where to put your little two cents in there. Mm-hmm. It makes a difference, and and so like I think just knowing where you can, what value you have to offer, and you're still figuring that out. You you you're finding your you. I, I think you found your voice already. Yeah, <laughs> Sound like yeah, you found I'm your learning. voice. I will say like my voice is, and just looking back at my old videos and stuff, it's just like wow, I can't believe I was singing like that. Like singing, my singing now is just so much more. I I pretty much I like to say the DMV added like the flavor when I moved mm. to Silver Spring DC and was just out here for the last like five years really put the flavor in my voice I was mm. singing in Hagerstown but now I'm singing in DC mm. so um and yeah just learning from others too and just you know I have a lot of it's it's crazy because like every show I have now I know probably like half the lineup already or wow. I know who's throwing it or mm. I know the DJ so it's just like it's just crazy how like I just Moved myself into the music community out here. Mm -hmm. Not yeah, like by, that. yeah, just like on accident. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it, I think it was like more than, it was intentional. It sounds Yeah, intense. yeah, yeah, sounds yeah. <laughs> but, um, man, I want to get kind of into um, maybe some, do you know, like, so you know a lot of the, the other singers that are. Uh, out here. Yeah, out here too. Yes. So who are some of your, like, big influences if it had to be out here, number one, Alex Vaughn. She she throws the um, AV sessions out here. That's an open mic that I've kind of got my practice in or still get my practice in. I go every third Wednesday of the month. Um, Alex Vaughn, when I was a journalist major at Howard, um, my journalist, I was a part of an organization called Spotlight, and we did interviews around campus. And they told me they knew I liked to sing. I was in the gospel choir. So they were like, Amber, we got this hot new performer out. And this was about like maybe six or six years ago, six, maybe seven. Mm -hmm. um, I'm lying, five or six. Okay. Um, <laughs> but they had said, Amber, uh, we have um, an artist, Alex Vaughn, she's performing at union stage can you go and just like interview her after a performance so i'm like all right so i bring my cameraman or my like um journalist buddy we go out there and after alex vaughn gets off stage i just like loved her voice she was r and B. I i just love all r and B girlies out there mm -hmm. um i interviewed her and i was just asking her so many questions just about you know like you know just singing questions you know sometimes i was getting a side of myself side of my journalist questions i was just like so tell me about like you know like should i be going in the right am i going in the right direction yeah. like you know just all this performing and stuff and she gave me like a lot of keys and stuff let's um, hear some let's hear some keys keys like she i i can't remember them but she's just been pretty much it's like it's just amazing to it just came around full circle so like when i was at howard i wasn't like 21 yet so i couldn't go to her open mics but mm. interviewing her like inspired me like i was like i can't wait to go to her open mics i went to her like ep when she first like released the ep and just to see her she got signed by lvrn um mm. that's a black owned record label out here 
and she's like under Summer Walker and all of them. Oh, and it's well. just like, it's just beautiful to just see like the growth. It's like, I've seen you here and now like I see you here. So I know it's possible. Mm. Like I know it can happen. So um, I definitely, I support her open mics. And when I do see her, like I'm fangirling. So she's definitely probably like my number one mm. close to home, like influence, like just believing like, if I had to give someone props just, like, for helping me believe that this is true, that it can happen, I can, like, fit, chase my dreams, mm. it would be Alex Vaughn. Um, some beautiful. other ones out here. I mean, I just have, like, a lot of talented friends out here. Um, That's great. I can, I, I'm not even going to begin to name them because I don't want to miss anyone, so okay. I'm not even going to name. But then I should shout out. Oh, yeah. my gosh. <laughs> um, I guess some of, like, the organizations. I'm a part of Sounds and Spirits. I'm a background vocalist for them. Oh, sick. We get together every, I want to say, third Sunday of the month at Throw Social, if you've ever been there. Right. We set up there, and we do live band karaoke. You can do originals and stuff. So that was good. I started going there. One of my friends tagged me. Um, started singing just like regular covers as, you know, just like I signed up. And then um, I just went and started making my own connections. I went to the organizer and I was just like, hey, if you need another background vocalist, let me know. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just trying to, outside of work, I want to just do anything singing. So yeah. I'm like, I'll, you know, my little extracurriculars in my like life. Yeah, exactly. So he made me a BGV. So I do that every um, third Sunday of the month. AV sessions every um that's just like I hit all the open mics just to get practice really mm -hmm. just stage presence um just being in front of a crowd practicing my songs um what Mondays every other Monday I go to uh it's it's a place right beside society um attention band mm. they're actually also nominated for best R&B artist this okay. year um I started going to their open mic so me and my friend we just open mic hop and we just mm -hmm. get our practice in. Um, there's so many more. Dang. There's so many more. I'm like, literally, like, my boyfriend be getting a little upset sometimes because I be, it, I'm never home anymore. Because <laughs> after work, I'm going to a show. After work, oh, I'm singing here. I got mm -hmm. BGV practice. Or I got, you know, this. Rehearsal for this, this, this. So mm -hmm. it's That's like, it's, it's a blessing. It's just, it's just a blessing. I can't even say it's a curse because it's like, I, I don't hate being busy. Like, yeah, you're living it. Yeah, I'm like, I, I was like, this is what I wanted. So I put on my story the other day. I was like, this is what I prayed for. So mm. I can't be upset. That's awesome. I yeah. love that. Yeah, I mean, where would you say like the best place to um, network is? Network? Like in D.C.? Or I guess or just in, general, of, your in general. Best place to network? Shoot, I would just say in general, open mics. People, a lot of people, like, there's, like, a stigma around open mics now, like, you know, paying to get in, and a lot of people just don't like them because they think that they're doing more hurt to an artist than, I guess, uh, helping, but... Why would they, why does it hurt an artist? They, just because, like, they're, the conversation around, like, paying to get into open mics and stuff, and... Oh, you have um, to pay to actually perform? There's some open, there's some, some open mics that there's, like, a cover charge, and you have to, like, pay to get in. Um, and some people like don't agree with it because it's just like you know taken away from the artist. But I mean, my thing is like if you really want to sing, and I guess I just I don't care about the money when it comes to that because it's like I just like you said like I just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. So it's just like if this is if this is how I'm gonna be heard, like of course it'll be better if it was free. But like if this is how I'm gonna be heard, like you know I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do it because I love to do it. So um, I, as far as like networking though. Every single one of the open mics I go to is good for networking. Open mics in general, if you're an artist, is great for networking. Because um, like you said, you never know who's in there. Like mm -hmm. DJs, I've met so many people and gotten opportunities in my opportunities. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, we got another one for you this. I'm like, all right, bet. Or <laughs> I know you from here, so now you're going to get me into this. Okay, mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. It definitely is who you know. There was this um, community center that was forgot what the organization was called because it was a big um it was organized it was organized they had grammy award winners there they were talking about how they get sync placement uh placements there was a ton of beat makers pr ar artists producers everyone just went there it was in southeast i, I remember going uh, oh, last year oh my gosh wait was this hoodie season is that what it's called was everybody wearing hoodies was it cold 
No. 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 <laughs> I, I've, I've like only been to Southeast for like a show once. Oh, was, okay. Yeah, it was called Hoodie Season. It, you know, I, I rarely go to Southeast because I just heard some like danger. It's like dangerous or whatever. Dude, DC in general is dangerous. It's starting like, to become even more dangerous. What? My brother sends me the news every day. And I thought Silver Spring was safe because we're downtown Silver Spring. And oh my gosh, it's turned into Gotham City down there. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stabbing, shootings in the parking lot right next to my job. Like, that's why I got my pepper spray on me now. It's just mm-hmm. nowhere safe, but it's just like you can't even you can't even say stay safe because like they got they shooting the churches up, the stores, everything. So yeah, nothing's it's off just, limits, unfortunately. You just got pray. Yeah, I mean, part of it is also um, being prepared. Yeah, like not also being aware of your surroundings, and like there's been plenty of times where I've been I'm confronted with that uh, the uh, energy of danger. Yeah, but it's how I respond to it that makes the person think twice Mm -hmm. about what they're about to do or even group of people yeah and yeah i mean i remember just recently (laughs) uh not to make any like my parents concerned or whatever but (laughs) i mean but i don't know if they listen to this i don't know yeah i know i'm not saying this one to my mom yeah 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 (laughs) anyway yeah it's dangerous out there and especially in dupont i'd say oh i've heard some crazy things stuff going on in dupont some some robbings and um oh the car the carjackings get crazy out here yeah good thing Hmm. yeah i mean i guess do you think what if you uh met someone who you saw breaking into a car and then they were at your open mic (laughs) <laughs> if I if I see and they're performing at your open, but mic. like they didn't rob me. It was they didn't rob else. you. They robbed someone else. Would you want to work with them? Oh, but they were an artist wanting yeah, to work but, with you. Yeah, them. it depends. Well, <laughs> I can't say that. I mean, if their music's good, if really? I like their beats, like I try to like not remember what I saw, but I'm like, if it, you know, I don't know. Where's that I'll line just, the integrity of like, okay, I, are you a good person? You're right, because that's just shady business. Yeah, that's a, that's the yeah. thing. I think to me, it's only um, way is if I don't remember their face. But if I as clear as day saw them jacking someone's car, then I would just think it's just not safe to be around you in general. <laughs> yeah. So I take that back. I did see. Um, I think one time I was on U Street and there's um, what's that place? What's that place um, called? Half Smoke. Oh, okay. Half Smoke on the corner of U, and I was just out just with my friends and stuff, and I think I was out with him too, and we seen somebody just go up in there rob the whole restaurant or whatever they were taking in there and we just kind of looked and just just still waiting for our uber it's none of my business it's just like you just got to turn an eye to that stuff now like people are gonna do what they gotta do i guess oh man well yeah that's do you, do you know any martial arts or anything like that shoot you got no, I'm, i've been telling him to teach me how to fight a, for a couple couple years now, he he gave me the basics so, and I got a meta quest now, so I be I box on there and stuff. Oh okay. Yeah. I was I was gonna say the only thing he taught taught you is how to dougie. And, yeah uh, right yeah because he's I know I'm the singer he's the dancer. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh okay. that's that's and, a cool match. Yeah and actually speaking about the meta quests, I will say that's also a vital piece in just the singing world that i'm in now just because um i've done competitions in virtual reality whoa what what is that like oh my gosh it's and the crazy part is i still be nervous okay so you put on the meta quest put on the mask um and there's a app called horizon so it's all fake people you got your virtual bodies you can make it fake so i don't even look like myself in there (laughs) um you know i got a different different username and stuff um and i was just singing one time because you know they can hear you on the headset and um, one of these ladies came up to me and was like, hey, do you want to do this competition? And I was like, sure. She's like, all right, I'm going to, um, like, what, teleport you to my world. So okay. we teleport in. <laughs> I get there, and there's a whole crowd, like, of live other people with MetaQuest what? in the crowds. And um, I auditioned. I got in. I did, like, the show for, like, a, a, a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I actually I was runner-up. I wow. didn't win. And, like, the prize was, like, 500 real dollars. They cash app you. Um yeah, I didn't win. I was runner up, uh, and then I did the next season, and then I didn't make that one. But it's it's a it's a different experience, and it you would think it would like open me up to like more stage presence and stuff, but mm. I still be scared knowing like there's real people behind the masks. Interesting. So, so that's probably just... the most interesting singing thing I've done this far. And it's all just virtual reality, 
it's like not, it's a stage. You like it's a stage. Like when you put that mask on, like you're in like a theater. Like you see the crowd, you see the judges in front of you, and you're on the stage, and you got to pick up the mic with Whoa. your fake hand. Oh in. wow! Yeah, like it's real. How's the audio? Audio's good in there. They can hear you clearly. It's a little like you know um, delayed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're trying to like sing with someone, but like just you know individually, it's it's good. Hmm. It's good. That's cool. I definitely recommend a MetaQuest. Wow. So I think there's two um, like producers spend all their time in the studio just making beats, and we're all just like kind of missing out on all this stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least that's how I feel. Like I'm just so locked in. Oh, I don't. That I don't I like even know what's going on anymore. <laughs> okay, so what are you working on right now? So right now I'm working on my first EP. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I dropped my song Advice on my birthday last year. That's currently standing at 11K views on YouTube. Whoa. So yeah, I'm like, okay, I got a little bit of buzz. Organic um, or did you pay for those views? Organic. I dropped <laughs> it kidding. on, um, yeah, what? I don't even know where you can buy them at. Buy the fake Fiverr. views. <laughs> oh, yeah, is it? Uh, they Shoot. have um, server farms. They have like uh -huh. streaming farms. All right, so if it or hits 100k just... tomorrow, you know why then? Yeah, yeah. And you can buy you can buy a hundred phones. Uh huh. Set them oh. all up, and then have them watch the video two or three <laughs> yes. times a day. You know. I'm dead. I, there's people that probably really do that out there. That's yeah. Um, those are streaming farms. But yeah, advice is doing really good. Um, they're playing it in the MetaQuest in different rooms. Uh, the lady. You're really involved <laughs> with this really, virtual reality. <laughs> I'm really in the MetaQuest heavy. Um, I haven't been on it in a few days, but I have a whole little friend group out there, like no people, promoters out there. And then they do music stuff in real life, too. So it's Whoa. like I'm connecting with actual real artists, you know, um, in the MetaQuest. Um, That's cool. Have you seen the uh, Vision Pro? Yes, I want it, but who got money for that? Yeah, mm. but they don't even have those rooms that you're talking about. They don't. They don't because that's um. I think that's more uh, with the phone. Like you can just see like your phone and your like living space. They don't even incorporate the phone into your vision. Like uh, if you get a call, you have to take your the the uh, goggles off and then answer it and then answer it. Oh, what's, what's the point? Yeah. Oh, okay. So they still have some more. It's probably just like crazy iterations. graphics that people are going crazy over. I don't know. I've watched all the reviews for it. Yeah. I don't see anything crazy about it besides the FaceTime, maybe seeing yourself as like an avatar uh -huh. moving. and. Nah, MetaQuest over Vision Pro all day. Really? At least I can build connections. Hey, um, and win competitions. <laughs> and win competitions. Real money. Real yeah, money. Um, real. But yeah, advice is doing good. Um, so yeah, obviously after these... The whammy nominations, I was like, well, well, my brother, he actually spoke some life into me. He was like, you need to drop some music, like, you know, maybe even before, like, the whammies award shows, award shows because people are going to, you know, want to hear some more stuff. Like, even if you get this award for the song, they're going to be like, all right, now what's next? And, like, mm -hmm. I don't want to stall. So I just got in the studio about a couple of days ago mm. um, with my man, Yaminko. Shout out Yaminko. Met him at AV Sessions. He's a great producer. Okay. Or producer. If I'm wrong, I apologize. Okay. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm working with him because I've had major studio anxiety for a while. What what makes you anxious in the studio? It, it was really just, I guess, just like the time limit for me because for me, like, I'll be in the studio and I'll go over like a run that I did like a hundred times, even if it sounds perfect. We were just in there a couple of days ago and I was doing the same little note and I was just like, no, I got to do it again. I got to do it again. We did it about like 30, 40 times until I was like, you know, what? I give up. I came back out and the first take was beautiful wow. when we went with the first take. So it's just like that overthinking, you know, that I keep doing that like hinders me. And then I know that I'm wasting like money. Um, I went to a real, like, my first real studio session a couple years ago, and um, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Oh, it, I just wasted time because I just, I just kept saying, I kept asking the guy. I was like, the engineer, I was like, does it sound good? And he's like, pretty much like, why are you asking me? I'm like, thanks, I don't know. Like, <laughs> what? He's like, you need to be asking yourself, like, how do you like it? I'm like, no, no, how do you like it? No, you definitely need an engineer who has an idea what what good sounds like. Exactly. So I was just like, you know, he wasn't really helping me out. I wasn't helping myself out. So um, I was just afraid of just wasting money, like paying so many 
paying for so many hours and then not leaving with anything. So mm. that day I paid for three hours, didn't leave with anything because I trashed it because I didn't like it. So I was just wow. like, I got to go and pay for that again. So that's why I gave up on studios and I was like, how am I going to record my first song? So I'm in the middle of building like my own home studio. But, you know, that's, you know, you got to I want to get the best of the best. So I don't want to just like, you know, I know that's going to take some time to really build it how I want. Um, you could probably do it for about four hundred dollars. Yes, I I got like the essentials. I just need like a good mic. I'm just figuring out which mic I want to go go for. I got mm-hmm. a couple ideas. Just get but... the, I mean, this is a Shure. Sure, I heard good things. So about Shure is Shure. good, but um, the M1 is really good. Yeah, it's an emulator from State Slate Digital, mm-hmm. and it, what it does is it takes the same signal that a Sony, really you know thirty thousand dollar Sony microphone would mm-hmm. have. And it emulates that same signal, so it has a similar frequency response. So when you sing, it matches the same like what the frequencies would be like if you were using a bi- a better mic. It emulates mm. different microphones. Oh wow! So like a one one and done. Yeah, and it costs like four hundred ninety nine dollars. If you go on Reverb, you could mm-hmm. probably find a used one. You don't need to buy, you know, like a real expensive yeah like $2, new $2, version right? one. Yeah, you could even get a new one for I think like. 800 something on on reverb Mm -hmm. and those things are like 1300 or even 3600 for for the 87 yeah um if i if i'm correct with that i think it's the one yeah but there's two two different newmans but probably more more than that but yeah um but you could buy something that's really good quality for 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 like much 500 dollars you get a decent interface you could just use a focus right Mm -hmm. yeah i got the interface okay i got the interface i got the i got like what doll do you use Ooh, what's a doll? You see? Um, oh, okay. You need a doll. What is that? I all need right. one. Digital audio workstation. That's <laughs> okay. All right. Write that one what down. What is that? Like a software? Yeah, that's a software you to see? record on. Oh, okay. So I do need a software. You see, I'm just calling it a software. I'm like, I don't know which one yet, but I need a software. Yeah, you need a software. It's a doll. See. So you can get, there's a lot of them. See. I would recommend, F, um, not Apple Studios. <laughs> I was going to say um, Ableton. Ableton? Yeah, Ableton. Which one have I been hearing about? What's like the common ones? So you got FO Studios, you have Studio One, you have Reason, you have Logic, you have okay. um, uh, Pro. What's the um, Pro Max Pro Tool Tools? Pro Tools. Pro <laughs> Max Tools Hardware. See, this is why I gotta get back in the <laughs> studio. The, I can't build this myself. The right Pro now. Tool Hardware Store. Yeah, okay. that one. Uh, <laughs> Pro Tool Hardware Store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. I would just recommend Ableton. It's yeah. A really good audio manipulation. I've been okay. using that for eight years. I used FL Studios for four years. Mm-hmm. Ab- uh, Ableton better step up because FL Studios is starting to come back. Really. With some some heavy hitting options that mm. that makes me kind of look at it. But Ableton Twelve is coming in the yeah. next maybe even this month. Mm. So I'm okay, looking just looking get forward in, to the upgrade. Look into that. But yeah, knowing. What DAW to use is, it's like, what brain do you want to use? It's like, what tools and, like, how do you want to access those tools? Yeah. And then, like, can you resonate with that creative flow Mm -hmm. when you are creating? Yeah. Like, can you access the tools you like? Are you doing the automations the way you want it? And then that's what makes it, like, oh, that's the DAW you should Mm -hmm. use rather than just using a DAW that everyone else has. But yeah, I personally would just say Ableton based off. How you can manipulate audio. Audio. And that's what the name of the game is. Yeah. Audio. That's something I got to look into. But I know that also takes time just, like, learning the software and stuff. So I'm just, like, because usually all, all, like, the demos that I've done and features, there's even some things out on Apple Music now. Like, I have more features out than songs. Mm. But um, they've all been recorded on my phone on BandLab on what? my boyfriend's gaming headphones. Oh. <laughs> and they are some of the best songs you ever wow. <laughs> you will ever hear. Shout out. Yes. So wow. thanks to his headphones, then I went over to my iPhone headphones. Um, and I'll just go back and forth. And people ask me all the time, like, oh, my gosh, Amber, where'd you go to get this recorded? I'm like, what? Like, was whatever it? brand his, his headphones was in. So it's, so it's part of the, the, um, the song, you just have him screaming... At the one of the people that just like shot him in Call of Duty because he's just like oh, pissed off like no 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 he's raging halfway through uh, he's oh, and well, then you're like singing a song on top of that wait no 
Wait, is, wait, is this a joke? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what's going on? No, no, no it's like because yeah. you say it's a gaming headset, uh-huh. so that like, so I imagine him still playing. Yeah. And then he's got it on, <laughs> and, and then, then you're I'm recording the same time. No, every time I'm singing, he's like, "You need these?" I'm like, "Yep." And then he actually got some new headphones because I took them over. Now they're my singing headphones. Okay. Wow. Someone needs to get you a mic. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know. It's just like crystal clear in those. I just like, it just sounds great. You know and what? If like, you, you know, when you when you get real big and everything, that'll be a really good story to wasn't have. it? I know. Like, I'm telling you, the fact that it sounds so pristine on those, I'm just like, what? Forget the studio. But now I'm just like, you know, now I got to actually, you know, what's mixing, mastering. Um, but yeah, my man's Ben, he, he was, he was really special to come out to my house. Cause he knew that he actually like the whole time I was recording, he like turned around, like left the room sometimes just because like, you know, I got to be like in my most comfortable, mm-hmm. just like to get all those notes out and stuff. So we went over that for about two days and then he mixed it for me. And then I mastered it off of, um, distro kid they have mixy. okay <laughs> i know because i'm thinking all right you, like, you record off a gaming uh <laughs> um headset mm-hmm. you're you're what is it mixing it on band, band la- oh what is it uh or garage I, band no, on so your phone he, he he uses like an actual software he mixed it on an actual software actual software then, but you're mastering it on a potato no mastering on mixia it's like a new um it's a new uh what is it it's a Laundry new thing detergent. on distro game. <laughs> For real, I don't even know. Don't okay, even but it's it's an yeah. actual thing. Okay, mm-hmm. Mixia. Mixia. So it's like a new addition to Distro Kid. When you you know Distro Kid, yeah, I use that's distro. not right. Yeah. Um, they they just dropped like a new little app feature. It's like ninety nine dollars a year. Okay. Um, and it like masters it instantly. Mm. So I don't know what mastering sounds like for real. So like when I heard it though, the first time from his mixing and the mastering, clearly like I heard the differences. So I went with that master because I said, if Distro Kid's doing it, if Distro Kid's, pretty, you know, if they, they yeah. I already, I'm dropping on Distro Kid, might as well trust them. Um, it sounds good. So, and it got, shoot, it got a whammy. So that's a so, got a okay. whammy nomination. It's, work, so. it's working. Them gaming headphones, we putting them to work. Yeah. I might just use them again, so. <laughs> That'll be your, your um, staple. Yes. Your signature microphone will be a exactly. Nintendo 64 headset. Yes. Wow. The big ones with the little uh, mic piece. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best. Um, but I do plan on, on this EP that I'm dropping. I, I was thinking about dropping it on my birthday again and just, I just feel like, you know, sp- it's a special day. That's why I dropped my single on my birthday last year. Cause I'm like, yeah, why not? Yeah. You know? So, um, it was going to be my birthday, but now I'm thinking like maybe before the whammies just to give, you know, my new supporters something else to listen to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just like a person who thought like, well, I thought there was like no way that I could record music like without like a professional studio. And then that was kind of my way of making something out of nothing. I was just like, well, I, I don't know. The first thing about booking a session and stuff, like maybe a year or two ago when I started recording the demos, I was like, babe, let me see. Let me look at your headphones. And I was like, let me just plug this into Band Lab and see. And like when I tell you, when I find out those headphone names, I like DM. Yeah. And I'll let you know. But they were crystal clear. I heard my voice over the track. I'm over here playing with harmonies and stuff. Then I'm letting my friends listen to it. Like, what studio did you go to? And I'm just like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I'm about to. There was a couple songs I wanted to drop straight off the gaming headphones but then i was like they're just too good to <laughs> have this quality really? so let me go to the studio so that's where i'm at now working on i'll probably have about like four to five songs on the ep including advice um i'm just looking for a, a title right now to explain all the songs that i have because they all have kind of different different meanings but i'm trying to find like a common thread mm. Um, the theme. Yeah, because I know my future like EP and albums will probably have a meaning, and mm. I'll probably write songs around that meaning. But right now, like I'm like I just wrote all these songs just you know based off how I was feeling that day. Yeah. So I'll, I'll try to have to hmm. make some chaos. Because you know, like there's name. some themes that are like my confessions or, um, like 
Or it could, it could be called thoughts and considerations. Thoughts and considerations. That's so long, though. Yeah, thoughts yeah. and considerations. Yeah. <laughs> Brought AP. to you by <laughs> gaming headphones. Yes. For real. Yeah. yeah they are probably sponsor me, too, once that they comes will. out. They will. I'm saying. Little, like Turtle or something? I forgot the name of it. I haven't gamed in so many years. Mm-hmm. Do you game, though? Oh, MetaQuest. Oh, yeah, that's, that's your thing. Yeah, that's my game, and yep. It's brought to you by nope. MetaQuest. You can't get me on a PS5 or anything like that, but mm. MetaQuest, I can do with my hands and stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy. Meta, um, I'm trying to think of what the EP name could be then. I know, yeah, I have a song called, oh, I guess, yeah, let me let me save that. Let Beta, me save that, actually. Beta Meta. Beta Meta. Beta Meta. Oh, no. Meta. Or on the quest for better. Oh, no, on the quest for meta? <laughs> on the quest for better was actually kind of good. On the quest for better. On the meta. quest for better. But I don't know. Um, maybe I feel like that's also one of the things where I have to take, um, I got in, tack with, got in contact with one of my um, favorite photographers. Hey, and um, he, <clears throat> uh, we're thinking about doing an EP cover, you know. Because my first um, single cover I did, you know, when the AI was going crazy. Yeah, I was going to ask. You yes. mean using that? Oh, so for my first um, single, I used that because I was just like, I, I don't have any, like, you know, professional photography mm-hmm. friends Graf- and stuff like designers. that. Exactly. And I didn't know what I was going for. So I liked this AI picture of me looking like a cartoon. Mm-hmm. And then I just replaced the background, edited it up a little bit more. And I was like, this looks like advice. And yeah. just put it, <laughs> put it out. And I'm what just the- like, that's the good thing about artists because, like, you, it's just like nothing nothing set in stone i think like you said earlier like you can i can just maneuver how i want like nobody has to understand it but me yeah so they're probably like what what why did she use this like fake picture of herself but but you know what that also the mystery is is really awesome you know like with cardi um playboy cardi he's, mm-hmm. he likes to be this mysterious character yes he's hooded or he has a mask or he has something mm-hmm. going a thong on song recently oh i mean did you watch the aiden uh, interview? I didn't watch that actually. It's terrible. Oh, really? It was terrible. Oh my god! I think he got paid like two million dollars just to, to be on there for ten no, minutes. No, and he wasn't saying much. Was he, he barely said anything. He said, "I love y'all," and that's it. No way. Yeah, he barely said See? anything about new music 2024. That's it. That's crazy. And and they got, get paid for that. Pay like two two million for that. But wow. Yeah, so that mysterious angle, like it sells too. It does in hip hop. Hmm. Well, I wonder what angle. So, what angle are you kind of looking at to promote yourself for R and B? Um, honestly, so just like based off the feedback of the first single, advice, advice was such just a positive song, and like, no, like there's no judgment to any of the R and B girlies singing about everything else because I have songs that are singing about everything else too. But I don't think people have heard like positive positive r&b in a long time where it's just like no curse words like no like you know um you know the toxic toxic all that stuff Mm -hmm. like it's just just feel good makes you feel good like empowerment Mm -hmm. um and like like i said like not all my songs are going to be that way but i am trying to just go for the classic r&b you know like they say Mm -hmm. bring the r&b back i'm trying to each song Mm -hmm. um that 1990s vibe yes just yeah just and even if the songs are a lot of them are about love and stuff just you know the keisha cole vibes the jasmine sullivan vibes um you feel like uh, r&b still has soul like the today's today's r&b yes there there's a select few there's some we did lose our way a little bit back I would say like maybe a couple of years ago, but I think we're finding our way back. Coco Jones is bringing it back. Victoria Monet is bringing it back. Why and do you so, think it left? Like, I mean, cause, cause R and B, they started like describing R and B as I feel like just something else. It just wasn't R and B, but they started labeling it as R and B. So, I mean, I appreciate like, you know, trying to do something different with it because I can say that I'm trying to kind of like add more diverse beats to R&B and make it more like, you know, enjoyable mm, in a way. Upbeat. Yeah, a beat. Mm. Um, but I don't know. It's just like a lot of singers coming out and just, you know, <clears throat> I hate like, you know, I don't like, I don't. I think I they're reusing old, you know, like they're just not really inventing something new. Yeah. And I actually don't even have a problem with like samples and stuff, but it's just like singers like Coco Jones is like one of like the I don't know how to explain it. Like she's just she's just bringing R and B back. You could just hear she can sing. Like a lot of mm-hmm. these people are making, 
you know, songs, R&B songs, and it's like they're just doing it because they can. They got the money to go mm -hmm. to the studio sessions. The voice. To, they got a hot beat from their producer. They could just drop it because they can hit a note. But we, we, we're we losing the singers. Mm. And a lot of them are in church, which is amazing because, you know, God gave them a gift. Obviously, they are thriving. Um, but there's just, like, other than that, like, the R&B, it just, it just wasn't stolen a couple years mm. ago. Now it's coming back a little mm. bit. Mm, okay. So what artists? Oh, did you see, did you see the Usher uh, halftime show? Oh yes, I did. What'd you think of that? It was nice. Me and my wife, we actually got in a little argument, that little little debacle about it okay. the other night, because everybody's going crazy how he was holding Alicia Keys. Oh yeah. What'd and I don't. I mean, personally, I just felt like it's just show business. Like, if that the the songs about my boo and stuff, like. You know, they're supposed to, like, play into it. I'm mm -hmm. sure they're good friends. Their kids play together. Like, I don't think it was anything serious. And then also, if her husband don't got a problem with it, why everybody else got a mm -hmm. problem with it? If he's secure in it, then I don't think it's it's an issue. But, um, you know, the guys. There's a bit of a respect factor. I could see why yeah. people would be on that side, too. Because you don't know what the inner dealings of other people's relationships are. Exactly. And just because you're, like, doing something for a performance, it's, like, almost saying, hey, it's okay publicly to do this to someone else's woman true 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 so I, and, I get that side of things yeah and see i understood that too and that's why i kept telling him i was like well if it was rehearsed mm -hmm. i get it but it if definitely it wasn't, was i think it was yeah so if it wasn't rehearsed and like if she you know if alicia did come out and say like you know that was inappropriate or mm -hmm. she didn't like it but like the fact that we're not hearing anything from her but her husband's saying it's fine mm -hmm. i'm assuming everything's fine it's not a big deal but obviously i hope usher didn't you know without consent get yeah. up behind her like that what, what do you but... think uh top um one out of ten what do you think <clears throat> the performance was or his... the hug the, no, oh, his... no, <laughs> no, no the... <laughs> <laughs> for real the performance, the performance. Uh, the, his performance definitely 10 out of 10 i mean i'm just as as an artist just looking at an artist getting to that level is just always amazing Dude, to he watch. killed it he, he ki killed it yeah it was 12 out of 12 he was in his mic was on too so you could hear he was actually singing he was live the notes he was hitting the moves the, uh, just the compilation of artists coming in it's the the right at times the, right the transitions times. then all of a sudden little john comes in well, yeah i yeah. know turning the crowd up while he's on stage I and met, then skating nobody's ever yeah, skated and then the whole skating the... vibe you have dude I, like in the beginning i was like oh it's gonna be on the field like i thought that they were just they were getting lazy yeah that they were just gonna do the performance on the field and then you just see people mix, mix matched uh mix matched um costumes uh -huh. like this doesn't seem well thought out but then as it started progressing i'm like wait a second then he's on the stage and the stage is moving and then now yes. you have multiple um drummers and the guitarist is just like killing to be it able just... to do that in like 15 minutes is insane man that's that the takes a lot that went of... into it oh uh, and i mean i appreciate him for just giving like those other artists like the platforms like alicia keys mm -hmm. probably would have never got her that... own super bowl mm -hmm. but... the piano Oh, oh my I God. know. That's Who made so that? Nice. That's I, a Ferrari I, piano. I, I, that's what I'm saying. And that's why Swiss Beats was saying, like, if Alicia didn't come out and say nothing, like, there was so much more, like, to be proud of than kind of that. I Like you said, I see where people are coming from, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it was just... It was just art, like from the outfits yeah. to the piano to the, the stage work, the performance, the dance moves, the everything. Little Chris coming in and killing it. And that was the last thing. And also, I'm like, it's Usher. Like, it's freaking Usher. Like, we already saw what happened to Kiki, like, not too long ago. Like, he he's like, I guess this is what he does. And so, mm. you know, until I guess people start coming out and saying, like, you know, it's a problem. Then, you know, I'll be like, okay, you know, he's being a little inappropriate mm. or he's doing a little too much. But... Yeah, no, I I thought that was well, the best Super Bowl performance I've seen. They said and it had the most viewers too, so I believe it. That's yeah, that's crazy. It was it was insane. Go but, down in history. Yeah, I actually became a big Usher fan after that. I remember just listening to it because I got the nice speakers in the, in the studio, so I'm listening to like how they're mixing all the sound and everything. Yeah. Like that. I heard some mixed reviews that they they should fire the mixing the sound engineer and everything like that. I'm listening to it. It was so well done. Like, I, I was getting goosebumps just, like, how things were sounding. So, yeah. And they were listening on, on some sort of tin TV or something like that where maybe they weren't getting the clarity. But uh -huh. it was it was well done. Like, when you could really hear the the vibes from, like, a nice uh, speakers. Imagine being there. 
Oh my gosh! I don't know if it would be as good as like in the stadium. You know, and, like uh, when you like the fact that you're seeing it on so many different cameras. It's you're getting the in person experience. Like you're getting like a sequence of experiences. True, true, true. Instead Rather of just than one just, angle. Yeah, yeah. And sound kind of just being a little. Yeah, like from one echo. In, one dimensional, you can't really hear where it's coming from. Or yeah. Just, I don't know, but would you want to have been there or? Oh yeah, for sure. That's why I'm like, you probably you can't take away the experience. Just even if like you know, it'll sound better on TV, but just being there in that dome full of mm, like everyone the and their mama there, like it was probably like just a vibe. Yeah, and I, yeah. I like the idea of also like the celebrities all being there. We're all just like together I know, as all one. All of them, like all of them. And I didn't know how much um, tickets were until, like, I saw a TikTok and they were saying, like, thousands. Millions. Millions? Two million. For a ticket? For upstairs. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Yeah. You better know how football works because I would have wasted my money. Did you see? But... Did you see it? <laughs> you don't know how football works? I see my brothers. They both play football. But <laughs> if they're not doing a touchdown, anything other than that, I don't know. Nope. I love that sentence, like how football works. <laughs> how football works, yep. <laughs> they just running that ball. I don't know what else. You think it's rigged? Um, Like this past game? No. Do you, oh, In I mean, general? Do you think, yeah, this past game was rigged? Um, I'm going to say yes because I hear a lot of people saying okay. it was rigged. Right. <laughs> yeah. The football was not working at that time. Uh-uh, it wasn't. Oh, uh, okay. I have heard there's some sort of theories that the nfl is scripted yeah I it could that. be i mean like they got money i'm sure they can do whatever they want fabricate a whole bunch of things i don't we know we would never know i think that anything is possible but i just take things with a grain of salt mm-hmm. yeah i'm not sure but yeah i thought that was an interesting current event that happened oh um ice spice and taylor swift together oh, being friends i don't know are they do you think they really are are they doing that for publicity hmm, i don't think it's for publicity I, I feel like honestly i feel like if taylor swift were to collab with me if i came up and i was like this big artist and we really like build a connection and you know i spice is probably just on the high of being taylor swift's like close friend but i don't think it's for publicity because they already dropped a song and the song was there <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like it? You didn't like so, it that much? I, mean, yeah. I like Ice Spice. Don't get me wrong. Taylor, yeah, I don't want this to bite me because I would do a song with Taylor, but I don't know. It's it, I don't think the, the mix was... I don't think Taylor Swift needed Ice Spice on that. Mm. Um, Ice Spice, she's in a lane of her own. Taylor right. Swift. It's just like some some just don't need to mix. Okay. But I mean, hey. But that's kind of cool, though. Like I think music is heading in that way of like two completely different genres merging together or different artists and how they would approach something. Yeah. You have, like, this country pop vibe and then with this more um, New York grunge style and then mm-hmm. she's kind of like, I do what I want, I do what I can, <laughs> whatever. Uh-huh. He does, <laughs> That's seriously. my interpretation of Ice Spice. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. But um, I'd love to hear a little sneak peek of what you got going on. Oh, yeah. We can do that um, if you can bless us with that. Shoot. <clears throat> what should I sing, baby? We had a freestyle. Original? Should I do something original? Of or? course, original. Original. Um, something that comes from the heart. Uh, 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 let's see. Let's see. Not like that light. I guess I could do a little bit of like that. Okay. All right. This song is called Like That. Mm-hmm. All right. One, two, three. Can you tell me something? Because I want to know how you feel about me. But baby, even though, yeah, you know I know already, you want the best for me, and I've been in my head. So baby, can you please look me in the eyes and tell me that you'll be alright, you know I like that, like that. Want you to hold me and just never let me go, please baby, you know that I want that, want that. Yeah, you know I like that. Like that, hope you love me right back, right back. You know I always be overthinking, baby. You know that I'm always snap back, snap back. 
Hey, okay. <laughs> yeah, we got yes. some acapella in here. I'm going to make a remix out of that. Yes. I'm going to send it to a, Taylor Swift. Oh, please. Tell yes. me and yeah. let me know what you want me on at. <laughs> yeah. That sounded awesome, especially without Thanks. the music. I could tell. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with, like, acapella singing. Like, that's just what I feel like the choirs taught me. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any songs that, um, so that one's not out yet, or it is out? No, I just started recording that, like, um, I want to say, like, four days ago. Wow. Um, that was the first session of it. I, I listened to it back a couple times. I know what I want to change, what I want to make different. And so that'll be on the EP, though. Mm, that's yeah. what I love about R&B, is that they know how to layer their vocals. Oh, yeah. They stack them up. They have some crazy harmonies. Yes. Yeah. See, harmonies, I, and I can just go all day, too. Sometimes, like, there was one producer that was like, all right, Amber, like, too many. Now it's just sounding really? like a layered <laughs> sandwich. Like, you, you don't need all that. Yeah. I'm like, all right. But that's the fun part about it. And honestly, I'm starting to learn that that's a talent in itself to even know harmonies. Because um, my friend, shout out Don Delay. Um, she's a rapper out here, amazing. We just did a song together, or we did a couple songs together. Um, and she wanted me to come and put like some embellishments on her song. And I was just like adding harmonies. And I noticed like her producer was like calling them highs and lows. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I'm like, what? I call those like harmonies. Like, you know, there's just like different names for them. Yeah, high harmony, low harmony. Yeah. And then um, she had told me like, you know, it's sometimes kind of difficult for her to like find like, you know, harmonies and mm -hmm. stuff. So I was like, wow, like, and I hear him just here. You know, I got an ear mm. for him. So I was like, Amber, is this a little talent I got? It is. Uh-oh. So That's I good. love harmonies. I could, I could talk all day about that. That's awesome. Let's get into that. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened with that? So you, you wrote, who'd you wrote, uh, yes. write for? So I actually almost got scammed for $3,000. Oh, and shoot. a beautiful song came out of it. Okay. Um, what so basically I got a DM from a stranger on D, uh, on Instagram. They said, you know, I love your songwriting. Can you please write my son, Danny, a birthday song? A birthday song, song. yo. Oh, my gosh. And a lot of people came to me after and said they got the same scam. And yo. I'm over here gullible. So I'm just like, oh, my God, like, tell me everything about him. Oh, he, he likes to climb on my back, play Spider-Man. His favorite color is this. His best friend's Amy. So I'm like, bet. Like, I'm writing yeah. all this down. She was like, I'll give you $300 for it. I'm like, all right, so I finished the song in a day because I'm like, songwriting, when I'm like really into it, it takes me a couple hours to a day max. Mm. So I'm finished the song. I'm playing it for everybody. I'm like, this is a banger. Like, she might just put this on Apple Music. Like, this <laughs> is crazy. Danny's going to love it. Um, so then she sends me a message the other day after I tell her it's done. And she's like, she's like, um, oh, like my manager or my assistant accidentally wrote 3000 on the check instead of 300 so I'm going to send you the 3000 but can you send back the remainder? So I was like, yeah, girl, like, I'm not going to oh, steal no. your money. <laughs> and so I'm telling everybody I'm about to be 3000 up. Like, I, I may I may just steal her stuff, but, yeah. you know, but I, I didn't. I was like, you know, I'll send it back. So I texted her back. I was like, I'll send it back. Um, Yeah, like, I'm ready. You can just send it over. So she sends, she sends over, like, the digital check. So something, and thank God, something told me to like I guess brag to my manager about it yeah and I'm like yeah so I'm getting you know I'm getting paid for this song I wrote the other day and he was like let me see and like I showed him the check and everything he was like Amber this is a scam and I was oh. just like how I was like I can't so I text her immediately I'm like hey is this a scam and she's like you know that's when like, like no the way. communication stopped there I had wrote the song um and yeah, I posted it on Instagram. I got a lot of buzz because everybody was like, Amber, you need to write children's songs now. Wow. So I was like, wow, I, that's something I figured out about myself. But I mean, that if I would have been. And easily scanned. Yes. That, <laughs> yep, that I would have been out of 3,000. Oh. Negative 3,000. It would have bounced. I went right to the bank that day and um, double checked, and they were like, yeah, it is a scam. So. Wow. But I would have never had Danny's birthday song. And yeah. that thing's going down in history. Can we hear it? Yes. Let's hear it. That's a great yes. story right before playing a song. Do you have the yes. instrumental or, or um, what is it like? Can you actually sing it or do you want to just oh, play yeah, it? Oh, yeah, I ain't singing that. Okay. You know, listen, Danny. That's, I'm not singing to no imaginary boy no okay. more. Okay. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I learned my lesson the first time. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, sure people would like to hear it, though. Yes. Let me see. I think it's on. Where did I put it on Instagram? Yeah. Well, if you have like um, an audio of it, I, I could play it actually in the um oh shoot i could probably send it to you, you like send after. it to me yeah. yeah and then but at least we'll play it through here and then oh, okay we can at least hear it um wait so i should send you the audio yeah yeah if you could send it to my email but at least for right now i mean either oh, right way. now i can just play it yeah right now i could play it I and then it. send it to me afterward got you 
Where is that at, Danny? Man, I was so sad too, just knowing, like, I was just like, he's gonna love it. He's gonna wake up to his birthday song and like probably write me a message, a video message, like, hi, Amber, my mom told you to yeah. write a song and I love it. And the fact that he was never real just blows my mind. You gotta say. Do you know what day it is today? <laughs> it's not just some normal Wait. day. It's such a special one. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's a very special day. Cause then he's turning 10. He's turning 10. Ah. Uh. Um, gaming headphones. This one. Gaming headphones, yeah. <laughs> I took every single fact and made this song. Wow. Every I didn't leave one out. Pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, <laughs> dude, I wanna, I wanna be Danny, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. Damn. I actually did get some DMs after that. People saying like, Amber, do you really write children birthday songs? You My could son would love it. Yeah. And I was like, start. Hey, like, I'll charge. At first, I was gonna do like fifty a song. No way. I know. What? I know that that's another discussion. Me like lowballing myself during this whole dude, process. At least uh, three fifty to five hundred to six hundred to thousand. Wow. See, and that's the that's the thing that I, I'm so glad I'll get to look back on this interview and be like, wow, look when Amber was charging 50 for features. Yeah. It, it's still, I actually just recently got um, double booked and uh, I have to pretty much fish out a price, I guess, like whoever's going to go higher because I can't do both of them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just hard. It's just, I don't know what it is. I guess just like, I feel that's just like, I guess that part of me not believing that i i'm that or you whatever just know your value yeah the value and stuff so i'm just like i don't think who am i to charge someone that's what i've mm, thought you're for an like artist the last, that needs to get paid for your work that's what i'm saying and i'm over here doing things for free or i feel bad like when i do charge and i'm like or like there was one time somebody asked me um they were like how much do you charge and i was like 100 per song and i was they wanted me to do like probably three or four songs and then they were like oh we don't have enough and i said i'll do it for free what <laughs> I was like, that credit, like, that, my credibility just shot all the way down. They're probably like, you just lied to us. Yeah. So oh. it, it's been a process. But now I'm starting to get back into it. I think I might, like, drop a menu this year. A menu? Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> <laughs> a menu, but like, pretty not an much. EP. No, just... uh, yeah, a menu first. Um, my feature costs. Okay. Set costs. Don't be, don't put that out there. No. No, no not a menu? No, don't put it out there. No. Because that can change. And then literally next month, a big um, 
Universal can hit you up. Yeah. And then if they see, okay, she's valuing herself at 50 bucks or $150, <laughs> yeah. how can we take her seriously as an artist? You're right. So keep all that, keep all the numbers to yourself. Negotiate with people when mm-hmm. they hit you up. Hey, what's the budget? You know, what's your turnaround look like? When do you want it uh, done by? Yeah. Get to know all the numbers. Then you start saying, okay, I can work with this. How about this? Does this work for you? Yeah. And then see what they think. Because then, then I'll also say, let me get a percentage on the back end. So that way I'm still getting money on the royalties. Yeah. Not just because I'm doing the, the track, but it's also because it's my piece of art that I'm putting out there. It's putting a lot of effort into it. So yes. you want to be getting your royalties on top of your your upfront cost, uh, your uh, pr- your price. Mm-hmm. So, There's so much I gotta learn. Yeah, too. so I would not be airing out. That's why I, I, I. That's another thing is like the whole Beat Stars thing and selling beats for one hundred fifty dollars and uh-huh. and then having leases for thirty dollars just Uh-oh. like devalues your work. Yeah, it's like I would rather sell. I would rather have clients that know my worth who are willing to pay me what I you know what we discuss. Yeah. Than them think that they can just. Get a thirty dollar beat and and I be know. like that's not. I want to develop the art, you mm-hmm. know. I want to develop the the sound that that artist is going for. I want to be part of the is, process. People will pay, like, and I've learned that. Like, I'll shoot out a price, and I'm like, oh, they're gonna say no, and they're like, all right, like I'll do it. I'm like, oh, so y'all, if y'all paying for me, you gotta think I'm good. You gotta think I'm. The, but if they're that's talking all... to you. They already think that you're good. Exactly. They're hitting so... you up. That's another thing. Is like, uh, there's some people that are trying to like seem like I need to sell myself to them or like, I don't know if we can trust you. Yeah. I'm like, well, you reached out to me for some reason. You, exactly. you liked me enough. You thought I was reputable enough. Exactly. You trust- even, even you, I was just like, a podcast with me? Yeah, like, really? <laughs> what am I going to talk about for an hour? I mean, you could, right here, we talk more than an <laughs> exactly. hour at this point. Wow. It's, it's, that's the thing because, yeah. I mean, you're a vibrant person. You got a lot going on. You're very talented. Thank you. You know, uh, you got quite a dynamic personality yeah you know yeah. so you've got a lot to talk about yes and actually i do also want to talk about a reality show that i just completed okay okay yes. let's do that i um, speaking about that just remembered um jam um so my man's tizzy i keep calling her by my man's but my man's tizzy he um he is He's a young mogul out here. Okay. Um, he brought an R&B reality show to the DMV. Um, they held auditions at the Oyster Bar. Only about, like, 12 people showed up. Mm-hmm. Then it was, like, chopped down to seven, and then some people dropped out, and then it was dropped down to three. And mm-hmm. I was a part of the three. Okay. So there's a fresh YouTube series out. Episode one is now on YouTube. And it's pretty much just a series going through just, like, you know, I had my audition, and then we had rehearsals. They videotaped everything. We had confessionals, and then we had the finale show. Um, mm. And so now, and then I won. At the end, I won a residency. You can't tell I know. No, you can't tell him <laughs> no. what happened. No. Oh, wait. You don't tell him the end? Oh, well, I mean, the residency is kind of, like, already out there. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, All right. That's like good. We, and it was supposed to start on, what's today, the 12th or 13th? It's the 13th. Residency was supposed to start this month, but um, we have a new date for that, but... I will be starting to have a residency okay, that's at a Oyster Bar um, every Monday night. So wow. that'll, you know, stay updated with that. But You better that's... be getting more than $50 a show for that. Oh, for sure. <laughs> no, we already talked about that. <laughs> okay, so good. that's actually exciting because it's like my first kind of like, you know, income outside of like my other job. So mm-hmm. um that's fantastic. I'm like I'm I'm in the right direction. I'm like all right, just keep yeah, keep it coming. We'll put the uh, the link to the reality show in the description. Yes, please. Oh my yeah. gosh, Tizzy would love that. Tizzy, thank me later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Send me a cash yeah. out. All <laughs> right. But um, that's great. Um, uh, I would I love to hear a, a song that is off your EP or something that's to come or something like that. Ooh. Besides the kids, you know, besides, you know, we're, we're, we'll pe- we appeal to all crowds here. Yeah. But let's let's try to get into some. Some real yeah, like you want me to sing something, right? Yeah, I want, I want to hear some some real oh, soul soulful yes. vibes. Yes, okay, Not shoot, I'm gonna sing. Danny's turning ten. ten. <laughs> <laughs> turning although, ten. Although that is though. a hook right there. Yes, it really is. Um, I will sing my song. Let me just double check. Yep, I'm gonna sit up for this. All right. All so, right. Do a quick intro for this one. 
Yes, so this song is called, uh, let me find the track first. Okay. All I ever needed. Let me see. Um, I do get off my beats off of YouTube. Okay. Uh, I gotta, you know, well, find a producer. Yeah. I was about to say, I, I saw you playing the air piano over there, so mm-hmm. we'll talk after. Yeah. But... <laughs> you can tell by my air <laughs> piano playing. Yes, yeah. so I was like, oh, he got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this is all I ever needed. I wrote this song probably in. It's funny because I'll have this writer's block for months, but then which when I write exist, that, which, which doesn't exist, but then I'll write like a song in like two hours. Yeah. Um, this was that. It's just a song about um, just not needing anyone but yourself. And that's something that I'm trying to learn for myself. So a lot of my songs, I'm really writing to myself. Hence why advice is my baby, because it's really, I wrote a letter to myself, put in a song. Love it. So this is all I ever needed. All right, here we go. For the ones who said that they would be there But didn't show up It took me a while to not care To go at myself And ask why do I need them The validation that comes from your opinions and I just needed time to see that I I had to realize that I the prize I ever needed What people think I Lots to learn about just loving me I'm getting closer to my inner peace I got it Affirmations in the morning Look at myself in the mirror like Ooh girl you cute Yeah girl I warned you You gon' be so mad when I see you And keep walking by Oh no I needed time, needed time, that I, that I, oh baby, no, no, but needed, no, I am all that I've ever needed, and I don't need nobody else to tell me, yeah, and to the ones that care, oh, no, 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 I am a love I ever needed, yeah, <laughs> Hey, yeah. oh my gosh. I love that's that's one of the songs that I think like will get me out the head. Yeah, I think uh you already you made it. You yeah. made it. Man, I want a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> what it makes you feel nah, like that's nah, good. Nah, 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 <laughs> I'ma drop that on V Day tomorrow. Oh yeah, v- <laughs> Valentine's Day. That's yes. right. Uh, how do you normally celebrate Valentine's Day? Um well, you know, I've been in a little relationship now for uh me and my boyfriend about to hit six years. Ooh. So yeah, we in a deep uh, okay. <laughs> uh, and every Valentine's Day, we usually go back and forth and do like each year we'll do something for each other. Nice. Um, so this year was his year, and obviously I just came back from. Uh, we had to celebrate a day early because I got to work tomorrow, get my money. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he took me out. We went to uh, Miss Toya's. It's a nice Creole place. 
Um, Ooh. in Silver Spring, and then he, he, you know, he paid for my nails and all this stuff today. Hey. He got me some flowers Pampered and balloons you. in the morning. So you know, princess treatment. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Well, what do you? What would you say? Like, um, on a next year or like the year before, what was that like? Did you? What would you um, do for a guy? Oh or your yeah. Boy? So Amen. what I've done, we was actually just talking about that. Actually, um, I want to say when it was my turn, probably about like two years ago, I um. I freaking, I, I decorated the room. I went to work. I had to go to work that day. He was at work. I decorated the room. I went to work. He came back to the decoration, and then he came back to some notes that said, hey, meet me at this place. Mm. So then I paid for the Uber and everything. He came to this mysterious, I got a little hotel or whatever. Okay, nice. Decorated the hotel. We got food. And then that next morning, we went to, I took him to um, the Arctic House Museum. Oh, that's a great place. Yes. And then we went to Mozzie. Um, downtown DC it was a restaurant like next to the hotel yeah. so I had a little whole you know excursion wow. you know for him An adventure um yeah but I'm 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 a really big planner and he's a really big gift giver so that's that's amazing holidays are great for us mm. why well, am I, you know I am adopted but I'm looking to be adopted again <laughs> If you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It would be and weird to have an older. I'm 31, but I could be your son. Uh-huh. <laughs> For real. But. No, there's. Hey, listen, I heard a lot of crazy stories about the dating world out there. Now, yeah. So, but uh, me and me and him met on BLK. It's a dating app. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, we actually just got endorsed by them on their. We're on their actual official page. Wow. On Instagram, but. It's just a funny story because, you know, there there's a lot of horror stories with, like, the dating online stuff, but... Like what? You know, killers. The killers out there? Killers. Killers in the jungle? Um, killers, robbers, uh, fake catfishes, mm. you know, not looking like yourself and stuff, but... Um, ever, ever Has that ever happened? For me, um, not not really. I, I didn't even... I wasn't even on the dating apps like that before. This was when I was in Howard, and everybody, like, everybody and their mama had a boyfriend. It was actually... On Valentine's Day, when I was like so sad because everybody was going on dates and stuff, and mm. I was just in the dorm, um, and then I just got on it one day, and then I met him. He wasn't creepy. Mm -hmm. and we're here now. <laughs> so you've heard some some stories though about like dating apps? of things that have that happened. Like yeah. what? Like I mean, I heard like the guy will take the girl on the date, and she never comes back. You hear that all the time, though. That's I don't hear that. Don't hear that's, Stay see, away that's, from the apps. Guys then. don't really talk about <laughs> yeah. it like that, I yeah. guess. Yeah. No, there's, a, I mean, it's just like some, it's just not what it seems. Hmm. So, I mean, but to each his own. Everybody hmm. has their own experience. But I have heard some, like, you know, gruesome murder come out of dating oh, apps. Yeah. yeah, Tinder Swindler, all that stuff. Like, Was that a, a serial killer? That Yeah, he was, it was a, a documentary on Netflix. Twin, Tinder Swindler, he, um, he, like, had all this money, but... Like he would date girls and then he would like take all their money, oh, but okay. like he would make them pay for everything. That's a decent idea. Pretty much like get them like <laughs> no, I'm I know kidding. like I'm just <laughs> oh wait kidding. what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what am I a part of? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it, I think it like the story was he um, he was dating these girls. He took them like on lavish trips, had them on jets and everything. Would take them to different countries shopping. But then, like, then he started, like, sucking them dry once they got, like, you know, in love with him. Mm. So he was like, I need, like, 10000 here. I need 20000 here. I need you to pay 30000 here. Wow. So they're going in debt. These ladies try to get their money back in court. Never. And that's why they made it a Netflix documentary wow. because they couldn't get their stuff back. But, um, yeah, some crazy, crazy what? out there. Like See, my, my experience was nice and wholesome. Nothing ever crazy mm -hmm. happened. So it yeah. was just, yeah. Thank God. Yeah, I mean, I've been catfished before, you know, really? like a few times where mm -hmm. you think it's going to go one way. And I actually stay. I, like, I'll see them and I'm like, oh, oh you don't look anything <laughs> like your pictures. <laughs> but you'll... Because uh, at that point, it's just about, like, I like just being a decent human. I don't want to make people feel bad just I because they... Looks. Hey, look, looks change. You know, you might think you look a certain way when yeah. you don't. But I at least that. I'll I'll be... It's not like I have to, like go all the way with mm -hmm. with every date that I go exactly. on. exactly, but I mean, everybody's I can be not respectful, be... you just get to, you know, like at least we can talk for like 15 minutes or so and mm -hmm. be like, okay, like at least we liked each other on texts and so <laughs> yeah, and then, I'll give yeah. you some decency and then be yeah, mature about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's good. 
But um, so what's to come? You have your EP coming out. Um, when's that coming? Come in? EP. Um, so like I said, I wanted to. I w- originally wanted it to be in June again on my birthday. Um, but it'll probably be like I'm pushing for April, like the beginning of April. Mm-hmm. Whammies is the twentieth. I want any time before the whammies. Okay. I just want to have something to go there with, you mm-hmm. know, like a project. And it's been too long. I've been sitting on these songs for like a couple years now. So, um, well, not not like the one I just performed, but like most of my work has been just just sitting there. It's in the works. It's been yeah. constantly. It's been in the works. Like my friends can tell you, I've been all throughout high school. My first single dropping. Then college came and went by. Oh, my first single still not here yet. <laughs> and then I finally dropped it. So even just the engagement that I'm getting on that, I've made a couple of dollars on DistroKid already. Okay. Um, so I was like, okay, people are buying like the YouTube ads and stuff. Um, and it's just really just it's just a nice song. Like you're just I feel like nobody's just hearing that like nice positive. Mm-hmm. So you're pushing P. I'm pushing P. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pushing positivity all 2024. My mom, she had a um, etiquette school, or she has an etiquette school. So mm. that's kind of like how I grew up, like learning like the knives and the forks on. The Do you know the goops? Whoa, what's that? Okay, I was about to say. I she thought you were like, whoa, of course I do, but I was oh. like, oh, okay. I'm the <laughs> no, only one. What? That's how I learned about the knives and the forks and everything. Oh, really? See, I knew the back go- back in the day, but not now. I didn't really pay okay. attention. So my I parents was... were old fashioned. Okay. So the goops, they like their fingers. The goops, they like their knives. These are all the goops. You do not want to be a goop. Yeah. So it's do the opposite of what goops do. Uh huh. But it's pretty much table etiquette. Yes. How to behave and. You, you read this book. It's called The Goops. The Goops. The Goops, yeah. No, if I call my mom, she'd probably know what The yeah, Goops are. Yeah, I think she'd appreciate like, that. Oh, That'd yeah, be a the deep... The Goops? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me tell you about that. Yeah, but she's um she's had that organization for some years now. And I feel like that's why I've been like... I mean, I've got my like my genuine... My genuine, what's the, what's the well, plural? Uh, genuine, 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 I like that. Nasty. Genuinity. <laughs> Genuinity. Um, yeah, I, I just get that from just. Genuine nature? Yeah, genuine nature mm. of me. I don't know now. Yeah. Now I'm getting a little saucy, a little risky with words. But um, yeah, I owe that to her just with, I mean, it's, it's a gift and a curse. I feel like me just being too nice in general has, you know, I've missed out on money. I've missed out on, you know, opportunities because I'm feeling bad for like the next person. Or sometimes I'm often hiding, hiding my Instagram stories because I think someone's going to get upset at me if I'm Mm. like at this event or so it's just like, I don't know. It's just this year is all about me. Like for once in my life, I'm going to stop people pleasing. That's what's up. I don't think it's a bad thing to be considerate of other people. But when it gets in the way, what you want to be doing. I think we project a lot of yeah. like, oh, that person's going to think this and all that. But like, you can't, you don't know what people are thinking. Yeah, for real. So just. And most of the time they're they're doing that. Like I've seen so many people, like everything, everybody that I'm worried about, I'm like, they're doing their own thing. They're they they they're not worried about me or what I got, what, mm-hmm. what I got to say, what I'm thinking. So. Yeah, unless um, they're paying your bills and really t- like taking care of you and they really care about you. Exactly. Then, hey. You know, I appreciate the support. You know, mm-hmm. like I'll try to be there whenever I can. Yeah. But I'm doing. I'm staying in my lane. I'm doing what I think I believe in. Exactly. And I'm. I. I love that. That you're. That t- this is the year for this you. This is the year. Finally, I'm like things are gonna look it up. It even if in like now I tell myself when I go to shows and stuff like, just I gotta just fake the confidence like like mm-hmm. the I know I'm the shit type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, even if I like don't fully believe it yet, that's the only way that I'm going to start believing if I just start living in it mm-hmm. and just throwing myself into it. So I think there's a little bit of a deep end too where you could get a little too carried away with the confidence and you yeah. think of yourself more of like arrogance and you are like in, you feel entitled and everything. Yeah. That's where <clears throat> you want to separate your persona on stage to mm-hmm. the person you are. It's like, I think you just need to have more experiences. And the more experiences you have, you know when to open up, when not to. And you'll be like, oh, okay. Like, you'll get a good gauge for, like, the types of people you want to have around. Yeah. So that way you're not just walled, closed up, mm-hmm. or you're just too open. You mm-hmm. know, you'll find that middle ground. Yeah. 
And right now you're just like a beam of light. You just like Seriously, you just want to yeah, share it with like, everybody. I mean, I feel which is like amazing. Con- only kind words being said out there about Amber Marie. Like, okay, so yeah, what's next for you? Um, <laughs> so you got the you got the EP coming out soon. EP's coming out. Um, yeah, so look out for a five to six EP coming out in April. From um, the Whammies. Uh, for the Whammies, DC big event happening coming soon. Um, what else we got? You're about to win on? the whammies. I'm about to win, honestly, and that's how I've been thinking because every other contest that I've been in, it's always been, oh, I'm not good enough to win. I can't win. But this time, I'm like, bro, if I can make the finalist position, I I, I can win. Mm-hmm. And I will you win. will. And I At will all win. all costs. <laughs> I will win. Watch out. If I, six, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but are, so if I walk by and I see you breaking into a car... I'll just say what's up. Yeah. And, uh, and, yep. I didn't, no, I don't know. I'm going to edit that out. All right. Right? All right. I know. I'll ask you. I know. You then I'll know you music. lost. Then for I'll know you lost. For real. I'll be like, yeah, things aren't looking you, up anymore. You hit rock bottom. <laughs> for real. Yes. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going to treat it like the BET Awards, like for real. Yeah. Yeah. It will be. Yeah. That, that'll be next, too. I know, yeah, that's, shoot, that's my next. Coco Jones can do it, I can do it. Alice Vaughn can do it, I can do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so you have uh, a IG? Yes, my IG is going to be Purple Amber Marie. You can get custom birthday songs. Custom birthday songs. I just wrote a birthday song for my mom um, in December, and she loved it, and I love it. And that's, I love that song so much. I'll probably play it for you after. I'd love to hear that. Um, but, yeah, that's it. Keep up with me, guys. I'm bringing R&B back one track at a time. And your residency at the Oyster Bar. Residency at the Oyster Bar coming soon. More details if you just follow me on the gram. I got that first episode of Jam out on YouTube right now. Meet me at Eaton Hotel every first Tuesday of the month if you want to come and freestyle and jam with us. Meet me every third third Sunday of the month if you want to come do karaoke at uh, Throw Social for Sounds and Spirits. You got to come see us. Every third Wednesday of the month, I'm also at AV Sessions, so come and do some open mic with us. Um, no, I have a list because I can't oh, wow. forget anyone. Okay, here we go. You gonna shoot out some names? Um, oh shoot, my friend, my friend Tiana. She she's a great event planner, and um, she she's bringing the music community together. We have a show coming up this Friday doing background vocals there's a lot of cute great artists mm. um i might show up to that r&b show yeah I listen i'm telling you i'm about to scout if you need some people like i got a whole yeah list of people who would love to be interviewed and they got probably way more you know accolades than i do shoot and i'll just i love the the variety yes there's there's so many out there's so many artists out here in the dmv so um congrats everybody everybody keep doing your thing i love being involved in this community i can't wait to look back years from now and just be like look at us guys like yeah. we're up here yeah i'm excited to see uh, where your journey is gonna head and uh i'm excited i'm really excited because loved your voice and uh you got a great personality good future ahead of you thank you so yes um anyway catch you guys on the next one appreciate you guys watching thank you and uh till next time peace oh, yeah,